Fireworks shows, cookouts, and pool parties are in full effect. And so are things here at the Summit 7 Secure the Dibs Summer Headquarters. I am pleased today to be joined by one of the most brilliant minds in our industry, especially when it comes to the topics of CUI and CMMC scoping, the CEO of DefCert, Mr. Ryan Bonner. Ryan, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, glad to be here. I'm excited to have you uh, join us today and, and to present on the topic that we're presenting on because I have something that I think uh, to talk about that I think is going to be like right down your alley. And it's going to be good to collaborate on that and to produce something for, for the industry. Um, and what I want to talk about today, Ryan, is, is CUI discovery. More so, I want to talk about um, CUI discovery and I want to take it a step further. And I want to utilize products and services and features made available through Microsoft, Microsoft 365 licensing. Sound like something you want to do, man? Yeah, let's get into that. All right, buddy. Let's have some fun. All right, so today uh, and for this presentation, we what we wanted to do is go through this exercise and kind of provide a tutorial of the process to plan, create, and execute a search for CUI in a Microsoft 365 environment utilizing Microsoft Purview Content Search. As we progress through this process, we are going to do a few things. First, we're going to talk about the data that we're going to be searching for. And because our target audience for this webinar is organizations trying to comply with DFARS requirements and obtain CMMC certifications, the data that we're going to be searching for today is CUI. After we get to know CUI a little bit better, Ryan, we are then going to provide a background on the Microsoft 365 solution that we will be using to search for the CUI data within the Microsoft 365 environment. Once we get all those formalities out of the way, then we're going to have some fun. We are going to ask Ryan to completely black out and provide us with pointers to help and design organizationally specific CUI keyword searches um, and develop a taxonomy for use in your Microsoft Purview content search. And with any luck, the tips and tricks that Ryan provides will lead to more granular search results and cut down on the false positives when you go to find CUI within your Microsoft 365 environment. Then once we've learned the art of developing keywords to use in the content search, I am going to provide a step-by-step -step instructional process on how to populate and execute your content search using Microsoft Purview. And then finally, we're gonna briefly discuss how your organization should use those results of your content search to validate, improve, or just jumpstart your CUI protections and your CMMC progress. But first, Ryan, let's talk about the data that we're going to be looking for. Today, like I said, we're going to be looking for controlled unclassified information or CUI. And on the screen, we see some basic characteristics of CUI. But Ryan, I have a question for you. And I feel like I, I want you to just absolutely go on, on a little bit of a bender rant and, and tell the folks at home what you know about CUI. Keep it, sum it up. And why CUI is important to DOD contractors. I know you can go for days, but what do you got to say, man? Sure. So when we think about CUI, a lot of organizations are trying to understand CUI using things that they have with them already, maybe a document or a contract clause, and they're not looking at the federal definition of CUI. So the federal definition of CUI given to us in the, the CUI program itself is a two-parter, right? We have one of the parts that's maybe the most relevant to focus on up here on the screen, which is in the federal definition, CUI's information that there's already an existing law or regulation in place that either requires an agency to safeguard information, that's maybe when you send it to them, or that it allows the agency to require you to safeguard that same information or there's some sort of dissemination control on who it can go to and under what conditions. So you have to remember CUI is not a new law and it's not really a new type of regulation for information. It's again, going back to summing it up, it's a summary of all the existing laws or regulations that have those components, either like a safeguarding requirement or a dissemination control. So if that law or regulation doesn't exist already, it's not going to qualify as CUI just because the data is sensitive. There has to be that, that legal or regulatory function in place. 
The other thing we have to remember is that the CUI program directly applies to agencies, but it only indirectly applies to private sector companies through contracts and agreements. So the information that we're going to be talking about also has to be subject to a contract. So that might mean I got it in the solicitation phase or in the performance of a contract from the government or the government gave it to a prime who then gave it to me. Or it could be that I'm like going to create something on a contract, a new contract deliverable. And that would also enroll that into these same requirements. So it's kind of, like I said, it's a two-parter. Uh, it's subject to a law or regulation, and it's part of a contract in some significant way as deliverable or something that you get. And, and the government has to have either created it themselves in the first place, or they need to own it, uh, things of that nature. So uh, ownership and possession is a big part of this. So when we look at the CUI registry, uh, a lot of organizations read the summary descriptions. They don't really try to dig into the details. If you scroll down on each of those registry entries, you'll actually see PDFs of individual uh, legal or regulatory authorities. So that might be like part of the US code or part of the, the code of federal regulations. You have to dig into those documents to see the limits of each of those laws or regulations. Some of them are really limited which could then help you say, oh, okay, I get it. This doesn't apply to me or to this data type in this condition. So there's also gonna be parts of CUI registry entries that are either basic or specified. If they're specified uh, CUI categories, it means that that law or that regulation has special rules that stack on top of things that we talk about a lot, like 800 for safeguarding. So you would, would you say that it's safe to assume um, that for, I guess, organizations that, I don't know, are in contracts with the Department of Defense for them to identify where their CUI resides and to protect it? Super important. I mean, okay. if, if you don't know where that data exists now, you're going to have a really hard time, even with the new requirements that are coming in Revision 3 of 800 for information location, knowing where the data is stored, and then secondarily, who has access. You're going to have a really hard time meeting that Rev3 requirement without this exercise. Which leads us into the next, you know, discussion that I kind of want to have here is uh, why is CUI discovery important for CMMC? I think it's pretty vital. Now, there, there may be some people that are asking themselves at this point, why is this important for my CMMC journey? And they quite possibly could also be saying to themselves, why should my organization take on this effort to discover CUI within my Microsoft 365 environment? And I think we both totally get the curiosity and the skepticism that's associated with those comments. But there's a, here's the deal when it comes to CUI and CMMC requirements. CUI scoping and discovery activities are vital to establishing and maintaining data flow within an environment for quite a few reasons. CMMC requirements are first and foremost data-centric in nature, right? So because of this, everything that CUI touches within an environment technically is considered in scope for the CMMC assessment and will be and will potentially require a certain level of safeguarding to be attached to it. And then that has to be validated. Right. And then, Ryan, I think we both can also agree that properly identifying and documenting the flow of CUI data is an extremely crucial and foundational part in an organization's path to CMMC certification. Failing to do this and failing to execute this adequately can prov uh, prove to be costly in more ways than one for these organizations as they try to achieve CMMC certification. By properly establishing and controlling the flow of CUI data throughout your CMMC scoped environment, organizations can isolate and control CUI scope to decrease uh, effort and cost associated with implementation of the security controls and requirements within this 800-171 and CMMC level two. They can also, and they think this is a really important part that people overlook, this isn't just about the initial discovery of, of the CUI, right? What if you're a more mature organization and you already think that your data is controlled and, and, and everything is good to go? Um, you can use activities like this to validate already implemented uh, protections and logical mechanisms that you put in place to control logical data flow, right? And these are things like DLP policies or user access permissions and, and things of that nature. And without performing these tasks uh, to ultimately illuminate the impact of CUI within your environment, your organization can ultimately be wasting valuable time and precious money 
uh, with inappropriate, ineffective, or unnecessary implementations. So I think it's key for you to, to go through this and identify where these things are. And are they supposed to be there? Okay, they are. Are they protected appropriately? Um, are, are there provisions in place to stop the unnecessary people from accessing that? And, and these are all things that you need to consider. And these are all things that are made possible by doing activities like this, such as CUI scoping and, and et cetera. All right, here thanks, we are. Thanks for sticking around. In a couple minutes, uh, where are we going? I think we're going to CU Island. Let's do it. <laughs>